Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are playing as William the Conqueror, King of England. Alright, so I like opening up on the uh, uh, large map every once in a while and see how things are developing around the world. Uh, so in this episode, uh, as I mentioned in the previous one, we're going to declare war on Scotland. However, before we do, we have to arrange a marriage uh, for our daughter whose uh, husband died. And we have a couple different choices. Uh, before we get into that, just to address a couple things brought, in, brought up in the comments. Uh, first of all, uh, a few people have asked about the Archbishop. You know, we have this really, really cruddy Archbishop, and, you know, thus he sucks at whatever job we assign him. And people have asked why I haven't uh, changed him out. Well, that is why right there. Uh, we cannot change him out because we are Catholic. Uh, we have no power to change our Archbishop. We're just stuck with whoever we get assigned here. It's unfortunate. It makes uh, converting uh, other uh, counties when you have, like, for instance, if you're on the uh, front line of the war between the Christians and the Muslims, either here in France or in one of the uh, Christian Iberian countries, it can be very difficult when you have a cruddy archbishop to, to convert the provinces uh, to your religion. Uh, it's just not a uh, option for us. Another thing, some people are uh, not happy about me doing things uh, somewhat historical. We've done a couple things historical, uh, but... One thing to be clear is we haven't done very much historical things. I mean, I mean pretty much we did uh, maybe two things, I think. That's it. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we, we changed up uh, her to an insightful thinker to kind of fit more in line with what she did historically. Uh, and then we disinherited him. And, and that's pretty much it. There wasn't really much else that we did that was uh, historical, per se. Uh, you know, we are role-playing as, as William, so we're doing kind of things that, that he did in his life. Uh, which, which of course fit with his his personality, uh, but that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, we're not doing again that we're not trying to replicate history here. Uh, we're just just taking a couple things. Uh, and again, I, I feel with uh, Robert, it wasn't just about history. It's also because out of our three sons, he's the worst one, uh, easily the worst one. So from a gameplay perspective, it also makes sense. Uh, and and from a roleplay perspective, you know, we wouldn't want him to uh, inherit when he's so you know incompetent and lazy. Uh, so. I don't, I don't think we're doing uh, things historically. Uh, we've just done a couple things, uh, just to be clear about that. And then the last one is, uh, thank you for the uh, pronunciation assistance with this one. Oh my god, I was so off. Apparently it's it's Lester, if I'm, if I'm right now. I think it's Lester. And I know that British English, or, or English English, I should say, uh, is the original English. But I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, you can't blame me for that. I mean, Jesus Christ. That spelling does not seem like that's how you'd pronounce that at all. Uh, it, it's interesting uh, how different uh, the the pronunciation is uh, again in in the United Kingdom uh, comparatively uh, to, to American English, where for the most part you can kind of sound out uh, you know words in, in American English and and be very likely to to be correct. Uh, but good God, who would expect that would be Lester? Oh, wow. Uh, so that is why I butcher these English names here, uh, because it's, it's, uh, you know, another one was, uh, that, that got me uh, confused for a while was a uh, Portsmouth. I always thought it was Portsmouth because that's how it's, it's spelled. <laughs> and, uh, it took me a little while to, before, you know, I've been corrected multiple times with people telling me that that's not how you pronounce that. Uh, but again, it just, uh, the spelling does not, uh, does not seem like, uh, that's how it would be pronounced. Uh, but let's go and get started in today's episode, guys. Uh, so we are going to arrange this marriage and we actually have two options that I've seen. Now, the first one would be in regards to a little notification that we have here uh, that says that the realm will lose land when this vassal dies. So when this count here, or Earl, I should say, he has two counties, these two right here in the middle of our kingdom. When he dies, the King of Scotland will inherit. And this will continue uh, along the line. Uh, this guy's the next uh, in line for those two counties. So. Even if the King of Scotland dies, uh, then his heir, who would then be the King of Scotland, uh, has the next claim uh, to those counties. So one option would be to arrange the marriage with this character here. Uh, arrange marriage for our daughter, because that's our only option, unfortunately. We can only arrange a marriage with the daughter. So if we were to try and change this up here, you can see that there's no other women available for us to arrange a marriage for him. So that'd be the only way to ensure that he has some kids, so that hopefully the these two counties don't leave our realm here and go to Scotland. Uh, but you know what, guys? I don't think we're gonna do that option because he's 28, and I'm hoping that he'll he'll get remarried. And he's not a knight, 
if he was a knight, you know, had higher prowess, uh, then I'd be a bit worried about it. Maybe we'd have to stop him from being a knight, because knights do tend to to die in higher numbers uh, from battle. So that would be a concern, but he's not. Uh, so hopefully he'll have children, uh, and and we're just not going to uh, we're not going to bother with it. If if it does go to Scotland, then we'll tax Scotland and take him back. Uh, we, we'll still have you know claims to it. Uh, would be rightfully. Uh, our land since we are the king of England and that's within the king of England so we could easily attack Scotland and take that land back if we if we have to uh, so instead we're gonna arrange a different marriage and we're gonna be arranging a marriage with the Duchess uh, Matilda of Tuscany uh, so she's one of the most powerful female characters uh, at the start of the game uh, you know she always was in, in CK2 as well like she was a, a marriage when you start on on that particular start date She's a marriage that, you know, everybody always tries to get uh, because this is a lot of land that she owns that would, uh, you know, go to go to her heir. And she actually has an heir here that is not yet betrothed. And on top of that, for whatever reason, she's willing to do a matrilineal marriage. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, and we don't even have to kill anybody to, to get him to succeed either because he's already the heir. Uh, he has a different religion, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so... Let's go ahead and arrange this betrothal. Of course, it won't be happening for seven years. And she will be 28 years old at that time. So hopefully uh, they'll have kids. She's definitely still within, uh, you know, the age limit for that. Uh, so hopefully they'll, they'll have children. It doesn't mean she's going to be sitting around for a long time. That's okay. Uh, if the situation changes, of course, we'll, we might have to uh, break the betrothal. We'll just uh, have to follow along with, well, with what happens there. So let's go ahead and declare war on Scotland. This is how I wanted to open the episode up. Uh, so let's try and get this county. I don't think there's anything else first get now. Just that county. So we're going to declare war on him. And we are going to change up a rally point. We're going to move it up to here. So we don't have to move it. Uh, move our troops all the way over there. And you will see also that it does take longer. Uh, so it's 15 days for these guys to, to get fully gathered. While in our capital, I think it's like 6 or 7. Uh, but obviously it does take a lot longer than, you know, whatever that would be, eight or nine days uh, to get up here. Uh, so it is the quicker route, uh, even though it does take a bit longer uh, to gather them. It's still the quickest way to go. One thing to, uh, one thing to consider, though, is the, uh, the fact that these provinces up here do not have enough supply for these troops. So they might take a little bit of, uh, lose a little bit of their supplies. Uh, so, of course, she did agree to that. And... Uh, this enemy has joined this conflict. I don't think we're going to pull any allies in. We don't really need them. Uh, we, you know, outnumber uh, the Scottish by quite a bit, so I'm not too worried about it, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and let these guys finish gathering. And then we'll go ahead and create a new army here. Again, same thing that we've, we've been doing. We're just trying to create... Uh, equal size armies, about equal size around that. Uh, about, about maybe... I guess we'll take a look and see how much supply there is. Maybe 3,500 for the main army, I think would be good. Yeah, I'm just going to take these ones that haven't gotten all their troops yet. So that way, when they do start getting their troops, they won't put our main army above the supply limit. Or at least not by too much. All right, we don't want to put the armor footmen there, though. All right, so let's go and start putting these bigger size armies over here. Uh, we actually put a little bit too many. Because again, I want to be about 3,500. All right, so that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and bring these guys over to the county that we're attempting to take, which it's going to be that fortification right there. And then, oops, nope, nope, no one do that. That's wrong. Let's see how we want to do this, actually. Where's the bigger fort? All right, so this is a really tiny fort here, so we'll go after this one. And also, we might want to go ahead and take a look at the terrain. There's an advantage there that they'll get because of the forest, but I think all of these are forested. Okay, so that's fine. All right, so he's going to move over there, and then we'll bring the other one over to here. And we also want to give him a commander. Let's go ahead and do that. Seems our nephew is our best uh, commander outside of us. I'm proud of the little guy. He's got a very good uh, martial rating. Uh, so that's who we'll appoint, because again, we don't have anybody with the trait that would improve our ability to siege these provinces down. So about 2,000 troops here is all they've got, so not many. So I'm not too worried about it. We are losing a little bit of money. Hopefully we'll make that up uh, in loot. Uh, contribution to the war chest. 
As I look in fear at my almost empty coffers, my herald announces that four of my vassals have arrived. We come bearing gold, my liege. A donation to defeat our enemies, Earl Robert announces. And he's brought them the three other people. So these are the, all the ones that are assisting us here. So they're spy master. We'll just see who they are so we know who helped us in this time that we needed it. All right, so we'll try to remember these guys. All right, so we get, you can say, I welcome your generosity. And they give us a little bit of gold. Uh, gold, you say, guard sees it. <laughs> we can just snatch it and take more of it. Uh, of course, uh, we'll gain stress because a brave character wouldn't do this. Uh, you are much too generous. I cannot accept. And then they'll get the opinion increase of us. Yeah, I feel like there's not really anything that would indicate, you know, diligence, you know, you, you don't shy away from hard work, but that doesn't mean you won't accept money. And we are ambitious and not afraid to take what we want. I, I think we'll say, I welcome your generosity. We could, of course, use the money. And I feel like turning down a gift sometimes, an offer, is quite rude. Now, this army is actually pretty big. We could probably split this into two so that they weren't taking so much attrition in some of these areas. Yeah, I feel like splitting this army into two would be better than what we're doing right now. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go and split these guys. And then we can try and siege down three provinces at the same time to try and end this war a little bit quicker. All right, so we'll get all these ones switched down here. And that's probably good. This makes up a lot of troops once they, they get fully formed here. Uh, so with these guys, let's go ahead and move them. I suppose we'll move them over to this province here. And they do need a commander as well. Let's go ahead and give them. I'm going to take a look and make sure that we still don't have anybody that's good at sieges. Just in case we got somebody new. No, it doesn't look like it. All right, so we'll just give the, the next best one which will be Earl Edric the Wild. All right, so he'll move over there. Uh, espionage, unbeliever. While performing his duties as spy master, Earl Robert has uncovered, uncovered a secret held by my agent, Mayor Hendrick. All right, so we now have a uh, the ability to get a hook on the mayor here. And I, I suppose we could do it. Let me take a look. Do we have, we could get this the maximum chance of success. Let's just take a look if he's in here. I don't see him. I guess the best way to do this though would to go ahead and get the hook on him first. So let's blackmail him for a hook and then we'll see how that looks. Uh, so what we wanted to do was move this. I guess we don't have to go through here to do it. We can just move, move it here. Uh, though I'm not entirely sure where it was we needed to move it. Yeah, I don't remember. It was somewhere around here. We might need to take a look at that. So remember, we're trying to assassinate this guy next. Okay, so he's right here. So that's where we want to move that. Have him find secrets there. See if uh, we can't find somebody we can blackmail. All right, excellent. So we'll be done in about 30-something days here, about two months there. And then this one's going to be probably a lot longer because I think this is a level four one. My wireless mouse just ran out of batteries. It had been warning me for a little while, but I, I wait until the last minute. I wait until I actually completely run out of batteries uh, before I uh, replace them. <laughs> just maximize that that battery length. So these guys are, are moving over here. They're going to try and attack our stuff. We're going to have to move troops over there to attack them with our main army. But because we're almost done here, we'll be done in two months, uh, what we might want to go ahead and do is is wait until we take that. Well, one uh, really nice thing about attacking them right after they land is that they get a penalty uh, in battle uh, if they've recently disembarked. So that would be good. And one way we could do this is by moving this guy over to this province here, and then we can move him out of there. And I think that's what we're going to do, actually. Because this siege just started, and I'd really like to get down here and get that army we dealt with. And you never know, that could result in us winning the war, uh, especially if he's leading his own troops. So yeah, we'll bring this guy over here so that we don't lose progress on the siege. And then we're going to bring this army out of there and see if we can't engage these guys on our own train. We're going to get the defensive bonuses in addition to them having that, that advantage penalty because they just recently disembarked. Strategical impasse. I'm sitting around the map table with Earl Hugh and Prince Robert discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Hugh eagerly points out all the prime targets we should immediately send raiding parties to pillage while Robert explains how we need to watch what our foes do and respond accordingly. It is my right to decide our ultimate course of action. All right, so this is our nephew, Earl Hugh, uh, who's, you know, a uh, very, you know, very good commander. Or he's a decent commander. 
that's not the net view that I think that we have the uh, uh, the really high uh, command rating. But he's also uh, got good prowess. I don't think that's the same nephew. I want to double check this. Uh, what's his name? Oh, it is Earl Hugh. Okay, so he has a higher command rating here. I see than what we than what we see because of those never back down and the chivalry focus. All right, so uh, we can employ both strategies. I think we've seen we might have seen this before. I'm not entirely sure. I I've seen this event before, but I don't know if uh, we saw it in the uh, in this series uh, because of our. Uh, our martial skill being really high, we're able to do both, and that's the, definitely the best option unless you're just trying to increase an opinion here. Uh, and we would like to keep our opinion high with both of them. And yeah, I don't see any reason not to to get both of them, so that's what we're gonna do. We'll go with that that best option there. And so you can see here that they have the little uh, disembark here, recently disembarked, and that's a, a, a large penalty. So we definitely want to attack them. I don't think it lasts very long. Yeah, 20 more days, so we might not be able to attack them in time. We'll see if we can get over there in time. I don't think so though guys. Potential battle in 20 days. So it looks like he'll likely have already lost it or will lose it the day that we attack. And that's if he sticks around. He very well could run from here. Uh, but even if it doesn't have that penalty, we'll have the advantage from the force. So I think that's the uh, best way to, to do this. We'll attack him. Uh, so Earl Odo was swayed by, by us. I didn't know we were still attempting to sway Earl Odo, but yeah, apparently we were. I think I meant to, to stop swaying him and then I never did. Let's see who we might want to, to change this up with. I guess we can go after the Archbishop. There's that option, it's kind of uh, not really necessary. Uh, we could also just take a look and see, oh, that's not what we want to do, and look, look at our realm. And take a look who uh, dislikes us. Uh, of course the Duchess doesn't like us, as you'd expect. Ooh, oh, Egypt. he doesn't like us at all. All right, so we will sway him. 93% chance of success. Excellent. All right, so we should win this battle. Um, you know, again, it, it's saying the opponent has recently disembarked, but I do expect that'll be gone, and he, he did move. All right, so we're gonna have to react to that, to him changing up here, and maybe go, see how we might wanna do this. Go to these hills. We want we wanna get it where there's no way that he can avoid this this battle. And we want to get the defense bonus as well. Okay, this is this is the forest, so we won't have the defense bonus here. He'll be defending the forest. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go here, because this gives us the option to go to either one of these provinces. So that's what we'll do. We did win one of these sieges, which is the important one, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next province, which is probably better this army rather than this army is sieging down here, because this is a, a level 4 fortification, so it's going to take... Uh, a lot longer, uh, so it's better that this guy, this guy moved here. Uh, we're down, we're already up to 16%. They're attempting to flee. They're gonna, gonna go back into the sea. I would really like to just get them caught here, even with the penalties that we're gonna have. It looks like they have a higher quality than us. Interesting. Uh, that's unexpected uh, that they have the, the higher quality because we have elite quality. Uh, we do have more soldiers than them, a lot more. Uh, we have a better army commander. They'll have the forest. Uh, and they have more men at arms counters. This could end up being a little bit close despite the numbers, but I think we'll win it. And it does say we'll, we'll win it as well, so there's that. Let's uh, watch the battle. Let's see if uh, how our knights do. And we did have an event fire. And this is not important. I'm going to say, may your journey be swift, unless he's... Yeah, he's, he wouldn't make a good knight or anything, so... May your journey be swift. We did finish up our siege here, so we should move to the next one. We're up to 22% now. Uh, let's see which one we want to do here. It'd probably be better to do this one, even though it takes a little bit longer. Well, no, no, we'll go to this one, and these guys can go to that one. And and what I was thinking is because this is the hill, so if anybody attacks them, then they won't uh, do as well. They're sending their troops to assist. That could be the deciding factor there, actually. Uh, and interestingly enough, this would have us set to be in the defender. You know what? They're going to be recently disembarked, so they're going to get that penalty. I'm absolutely fine with this, and, and you can see we're already winning this. Yeah, even with those extra troops. Uh, this has to do with that war that we were technically a part of. And I guess our, our ally lost it. It's unfortunate for him. Uh, they're sending 200-something men. I'm not entirely sure what they're planning on doing. Probably trying to siege that back down. As far as the uh, the counters, again, this is those armored footmen. Uh, they are being countered. Uh, yeah, both of them being countered by a light footman. That's that's one of the issues. Again, using those those armored 
footmen is that they are so easily countered. All right, so we did capture some enemy combatants, won the battle, that's 35%. They are actually going to attack us there. Although it seems they're fleeing. Okay, they're retreating. But they're retreating to that province, that's interesting. Now they will get the defensive bonus. And they do have knights and men at arms, so I know it's only 200 something men, but they can actually do some damage there just because they're gonna have some, uh, but it doesn't look like there's gonna be a battle. Okay. So what I wanted uh, to look at is the the battle results. This was a, a pretty big battle, so there should be some uh, some good individual battles by the knights for us to, to check out. Here's the stats if you wanna see them. Here's how our knights did. Uh, some of them got quite a few kills. We see that we killed three of them, so let's see who exactly did this. Uh, so we've got Earl Edric, the guy that we're trying to sway, the wild. Uh, apparently he's pretty good in individual combat. And he slayed a, a duke. He killed this duke here. Wow. Some high-ranking people dying. Uh, so our, our nephew won a battle, injured somebody. Man, they want to see the kills here. And then, of course, we have Earl Henry here, who's actually only got a uh, pretty average prowess, but he killed two people who had lower prowess. All right, awesome. And then we captured that guy right there. So we'll take a look at him, see if we want to ransom him off. We still got this guy in our prison. He's been there four years. I wonder if that's been enough time for him to cool off. No, he's still very angry with us. Huh, it says negative, or it says it's gonna increase by plus 1.20 per year, but negative 45 was what it was when we locked him up four years ago. So I'm a little bit surprised that that's still the same number. Uh, so let's go and see, do, do we want to ransom him off, first of all? He doesn't have good prowess, he doesn't have good command, he's injured. Uh, and we can get 30 gold for it. Uh, so yeah, why not? Let's ransom him. He's a lowborn. Maybe he doesn't deserve such treatment being a lowborn, but we'll ransom him off, guys. So let's go and move this guy over to here. Uh, they are fleeing, and they might come back. By that point, the war could very well be over. Uh, we do have a little bit of money. I think we might end up spending some of it. Oh yes, that's right. There's one thing I have to do before we start building. I wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to increase these guys' size. It's 163 though, so we'll wait to have a little bit more money since that could result in us going the negative. So I don't know. Yeah, it does look like they're gonna attack us here. Uh, they'll get the, the bonus for defending the hills. Uh, they have a much higher quality. These are just levies. We could end up losing that. So what we might wanna do, we'll move here and then we'll go up this way. Maybe it would just be best to go, yeah, like that. If it was more men, then I wouldn't help out here. Uh, but given that, I think we can win that, even with the defensive penalties. Let's go ahead and help out, make sure that we, we get the win there so we can finish that siege up. So that'll be big there. Again, getting those, those penalties because of the, uh, the hills. And so that did result in our advantage being fairly low. Just kind of see what happened over here. Nobody died or anything. No knights did. Uh, they arrived kind of a bit late. All right, so what we want to do is go ahead and move. Oh, they're going to move all these guys. We don't want to move all of them. And then move over to here. I'm just kind of work on these sieges and then get three sieges done at the same time. We're at 38%. We could chase their army down and try and, and defeat them. We'll let them come to us, though. And, and what's the most desirable thing is for them to come onto our own territory so that we'll be the one that gets those those defensive bonuses. Yeah, there's those 1,600 troops right there. Now, we did finish up a siege here, and it looks like our spouse got us a little bit of uh, extra stewardship. Or she gained a little bit of extra stewardship. Excellent. Uh, so, let's go ahead and move this army now. Uh, how long is this going to take? Six months, Jesus. Uh, so, what I think we're going to do, I want to keep this army flexible. So let's move these guys over to here, and then they'll go chasing them down. Uh, they'll continue the siege so the progress won't be removed. Yeah, they're gonna go back out to sea. And a twist of fate. As I make all the preparations necessary for Prince Canud's departure from this world, I, I am interrupted by a page. Oh nice, so he died all on his own. All right, well that's good, uh, because you do get a secret whenever you kill anybody, it becomes a secret. Uh, now it's not really a secret that we have to worry about anybody, you know, anybody spreading. Uh, but yeah, he died on his own. Excellent. Uh, though it does mean we spent all that money. How do you die? In battle, of course. Okay. So he's been removed from the equation, guys. So uh, now the King of Denmark has a new heir, uh, which is actually the one we want to be the heir. Why is he so opposed to uh, this guy here? 
That's interesting. He's a legitimized bastard, but yeah, they just uh, don't want to make him the heir. Well, it worked out nicely, and we didn't even have to kill anybody. Uh, so currently, the new heir is our son-in-law, and if these two have kids, which she's not pregnant yet, they need to they need to get busy. Uh, if they have children, then it'll be our dynasty on the throne of Denmark. Let's go and take a look at. Oh wait, no, that's right. He's still he's still a boy. That was just a betrothal. I was gonna see if she had gotten pregnant down there in Italy, but of course that's not the case yet. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this guy over here. Maybe we'll chase him down. Uh, he's probably going to attack right there. Actually. Let's go this way. I assume he's going to attack into the hills there since we're about to win. Now they're going back out to sea now. We'll just stand here. Actually, what we should probably do is go somewhere where we're not taking attrition so we can resupply. And we still got a lot of supplies, so it's not an issue, but might as well. Let's see what he does. Yeah, because we want to make sure... Getting those battles, getting the wins are big. Uh, we're at 53% now. 58%. We finished up that siege, which that was a, a difficult one because it was in the hills, so they could always attack us there and cause us issues. We could move here, and then we'd have to move these guys forward somewhere where they could get some supply, like right here, so that we can react to that army attacking either one of these two besieging armies. Yeah, they are going to go back out to sea. Let's just let them. Uh, let me take a look at this terrain here. It's plains. I think we should try and chase that guy down. Right, we're going to take a little bit of attrition anywhere we go, apparently. He'll probably run. But yeah, we'll go after him. Try and get that battle won. And then we'll we'll come over here and uh, deal with wherever he's at. Hmm. We might be able to engage him there. Let's go this way and uh, see if we can't catch him. Hopefully they don't have any bonuses towards uh, Siege. Uh, looks like they're going to go back out to sea, but I think we're going to catch them. And a hook expired? Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes there's just nothing to be done with the hooks. I'm trying to get rid of that. Now, there are some uh, character uh, perks that you can get that will give you uh, different methods for, for utilizing hooks. Uh, for instance, there's one in the stewardship. I think it's in the stewardship. It could be in the entry, but I'm pretty sure it's in the stewardship. Uh, that lets you uh, basically sell the hooks in a sense you uh, uh Earl Robert Dorset finished the okay so the secrets task got it uh, so it looks like he didn't find anything well we're gonna try again guys sometimes you just need to try again uh, and, and you will find something uh, you can't give up just because you failed once uh, but basically you can you can have the person you have a hook on pay you to get rid of the hook uh, so it's a real nice uh, perk very nice perk you make a lot of money uh, for having having secrets. Uh, so we did finish up uh, the siege here and we got ourselves some prisoners and a little bit of money. We're making good money from this. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and now increase the size of our men in arms. I think that's going to be the last thing we do with our men in arms for a little while. And we'll, we'll focus on starting to build some, uh, construct some buildings uh, since we haven't we haven't done any of that in this, this series yet because I've been focusing so much on the, the men in arms. All right, so we got this battle going. This should be, a, hopefully, an easy battle here. And we did finish up and got a nice 70% there. These guys need to move. Uh, we'll have them move over to this one, I suppose. Is that the best one? Yeah, that's fine. Let me see here. This is the level 2. Alright, so let's go and take a look at the battle here. See how our knights did. Let's see if we got any... Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there was anything here. Some injuries. Yeah, a little bit of injuries here. Duke William was unfortunately wounded by another William. Let's go ahead and take a look at our prisoners. See if we've got anywhere, anybody worth selling. We have the Countess, so she'll make us a little bit of money. So let's go ahead and sell her. 50 ransomer, I should say. And then we have Thomas here. He's okay, Marshall, but he's probably not leading anybody. He is wounded, so that's hitting his prowess, but even then it's it's not really that high. He's a he's a craven, so. We will well, looks like we can't really get anything from him. Uh, we could, of course, do the weak hook. That's about it, though. So we'll just keep him in there for now. You know, I, I don't think he'll ever uh, value this guy high enough. So you know what? Let's just get rid of him now. Let's just get the hook. I don't know if we'll ever use it. But we'll see. You never know. We might do a little bit of uh, intrigue here against the, the Scottish. Uh, so... Let's go ahead and move here. This is planes. 
I'm trying to beat that few hundred men. This is helping build that war score up. Uh, of course, he's going to accept that. Where's their army at? They're sieging down here. They got three months, so we have got to, to get down there. And it's hills as well. Uh, we're going to finish this first battle here, though, just so we don't have to worry about these guys behind us attacking anybody. And get that, that gold. Excellent. All right, so we'll do this battle here. And it should be easy, quick. And... Hold up. Let's take a look at all this stuff here. Oh no. My brother was slain in battle. Oh man. How unfortunate. Uh, we didn't get... It doesn't look like we've got any hit to our stress though. And typically when, you know, brothers and stuff die. Maybe it's right here. Oh, there it is. So we did get that hit to the stress. Uh, we're sad about our brother dying. And we are starting to get towards the her stress level, guys. Uh, so we might end up seeing a mental breakdown if we don't, if we don't deal with that soon. I think William's been... He's been working hard. And he does deserve a little bit of time off. The question is, would he take the time off? He's so diligent. I don't know if he would. Uh, enemy combatants were captured, so we'll have to take a look at those. Uh, of course, we won't have that alliance with Robert anymore. I, I'm curious to see who his heir is. So his son did take over. He's only five years old, so yeah, he won't be a problem anytime soon. Won't be a vassal we have to worry about anytime soon. So what I wanted to do as soon as that... Uh, uh, murder was done with. I had something else I wanted to do when it comes to espionage, but I forgot about it uh, when it comes to our our intrigue. So, let's take a look at the events and see who killed our brother. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be in this battle. Maybe it was a different battle where he died? Yeah, because I'm not seeing it here. Uh, unless he was in his own war, because he might not even have been our knight. That could have been his own war where he died. Doesn't necessarily mean that it was ours. Uh, so, Earl Odo uh, killed the mayor here when he was retreating from battle. Okay. Should have surrendered. Uh, we're at 90% now. Uh, do we have any sieges done? We do not. All right, so let's go to move these guys. Uh, do the attack here. And then let's go ahead and do what I wanted to do here in Brittany. So when we first married into Brittany, and it looks like the situation has changed a little bit from when I last looked at it. I had two extra daughters here. Are they twins? No, they're not twins. Uh, she's sickly. Okay, so probably by two different women is what I'm assuming here. Is the reason why they were born around the same time. Yeah, he's got two children that were born of uh, different women. So he's got two new daughters. Uh, but uh, the thing I want to look at here is you see that he now has a five-year-old son. Now, when we arranged the marriage with his, his daughter, uh, the betrothal, I should say, for Prince Robert. So that Prince Robert will inherit uh, Brittany, or, or his, his heir will. And then we'll combine Brittany with Normandy all under one member of our dynasty, which will be our grandson. Uh, of course, they would have to have kids. Uh, but when we plan to do that, she was the heir. And she is no longer the heir because there's a little boy here causing issues with that. And, uh, you know, as being an ambitious man, we, her goal, here, our goal here is to put our dynasty on as many thrones as we possibly can. Uh, so we want our dynasty in Brittany, we want them in Denmark, and we want them in Italy. And so this, this little boy is causing problems with that, so he's going to have to die. 12% chance, it's not a good chance. Not a good chance at all. Uh, we don't need to do this, since that guy's not the heir. We could, you know, still take him down, but we don't really necessarily need to. All right, so let's go to find secrets there and see if we can't improve it that way, because we don't really have a lot of money. Uh, we could take a look and see if anybody's willing to join. There's a few people willing to join. They'll probably be fairly cheap, too, because they're kind of low down on here. Maybe not. That's 105 for her. How about another 105 here? Okay, and it's, it's going to happen in eight years, so we got plenty of time to try and find secrets. I think we'll try and do that first. We'll try and find secrets, and then if we can't find any uh, to, to blackmail people into to helping us, then we will instead uh, attempt to bribe people, not to spend that money. That's okay. So we'll be engaged in this battle. Of course, they're going to try and take off, but it looks like they're not going to make it out of there. They don't have enough time, so we will attack them, and that should be the end of the conflict, guys. Might be able to get these sieges done before the battle is over and get that little bit of money. But yeah, big war over over one little county here. Uh, taking a while, I mean. All right, so we've won that battle. Excellent, let's go and take a look. Oh, we won't. Never mind. I hit the wrong button there. That's okay. So that is the end, guys. Let's go ahead and, you know what? We're gonna let the sieges finish up, or at least that one finish up so we can take the money here. Yeah, might as well take the money, guys. Uh, so I, th I think we'll let them both finish because they're almost done. It's not a lot of money, but I think it's enough to justify keeping in the war because we're only losing 3.2 per month. Yeah, and, and we just earned like 20 something, so definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and now 
enforce our demands on the king of Scotland. And we're going to gain 30 fame. And... Oh, nice. We actually gained a, a favor hook on her because we've increased her lands. I thought we were doing it for somebody else, but yeah, I guess we did it for her. Uh, I didn't even think about that. We just gave her her lands. That's not a problem, of course. I don't, I don't really have any issues with it. Again, this this woman is not, or, or, or little girl, excuse me, which will be a woman, is not you know necessarily our, our eternal enemy. Again, we'll we'll wait and see what we end up doing here with her. Uh, maybe it'll be our son that lets her out. All right, so that's been completed, and we have taken on a little bit more lands and and overall improved the look of our kingdom too. So next, the next conflict would be against the Welsh. And I think we'll wait a little bit, again, to kind of build these troop numbers up. I was doing that before, but we didn't wait very long. Uh, so we can go ahead and modify her again. She actually doesn't give us very many levies. So I think we should adjust this and then use the hook against her uh, to adjust her to regular feudal levies, normal, and get more, more troops from her. And she has no choice but to accept. All right, fantastic. And that's one of the advantages of uh, taking land for people is you do get a hook for, for helping them out. They owe you a favor. Uh, see if there's anything else we need to be aware of. Uh, of course, we do have some prisoners. We'll take a look at those. I think it might be time to finally release that guy. We also have this Earl here. Uh, we get a little bit of money. He doesn't have as much as we could get, but I'm not going to wait. Uh, so with this guy, I want to see what's going on with him. Is this finally declining? It is. Maybe the last time I looked at it... Yeah, maybe that was that that was just a year ago, and that's the reason why. Uh, what happened over here? All right, so we had that accepted, and our brother was taken prisoner. All right, uh, Earl Odo, he's taken prisoner in a conflict here. Okay, uh, one thing to consider is that your vassals, depending, again, this does depend on your crown authority. They have their own wars, uh, which is you know something when you play as a, a counter or duke is is, is very nice, uh, so that you're not just sitting there at peace, unable to ex expand your lands. Uh, even when you you have a liege, you can uh, depend on the crown authority. Uh, you you can attack uh, foreign countries to extend your lands, uh, and you can attack people within the country, other counts and dukes, uh, to to extend your lands that way. So there's often conflicts going around happening in your lands, and you'll notice that your lands will have like different colors on them, and, and that's why as it is represent like an internal conflict that's happening. Uh, so Earl Rogers' friendship this is our vassal, a dishonorable follower. While his new, numerous attempts to curry my favor have not gone unnoticed, I cannot feel but irritated by Earl Rogers' sudden interest in me, and I cannot shake the feeling that the man's intentions are not pure. So, we can say, but he still has a certain charm, and will gain some stress, and that will also improve his relations, be closer to a friendship. Uh, I don't know why we gain uh, stress from that, though, probably because I, I guess we're irritated, so we're, we're, you know, consenting that he's charming despite the fact that he's irritating us. They say, why can't he not leave me in peace? Or I never want to see his face again. Well, I don't think we'd say the, the the last one. But yeah, I think we'd probably say this one. He's being irritating. Yeah, leave me in peace. I just refuse his attempts to befriend us. Alright, so is there anything we need to be aware of over here? Of course, we have the right to declare war on the King of France, if we so desire. I would prefer expanding here though before going against France uh, they actually don't have that many troops uh, but they have a similar number to ours uh, it says it's inferior but when you look at his ally uh, it's it's almost almost the same amount as what we have pretty close and plus he could hire mercenaries if he has has the money so that'd be a little bit more of a challenging fight which we'd want to wait until we have our full amount of troops for that so that we can make sure that it's a, a good win we can imprison somebody. Let's take a look and see what she did. She's a fornicator. Uh, she's pregnant. Don't know who she fornicated with until the child is born. And even then we might not know. Where's she at? She is in Earl Odo's land. Okay. So we could just gain a hook on her by arresting her. I suppose we will. Why not? We'll arrest her and then let her back out for the hook. Alright. So let's go ahead and let her out now. Just give her a little warning. Stop fornicating, woman. Alright, so... Looks like we got motivated workers. Excellent. And 
That is not in our capital though, which is where I'd probably build with this money here. Got that hook. All right, excellent. So we have some money, so we're gonna go ahead and build build something in our capital. Uh, I did wanna take a look and see how we're doing on getting this secret. We're about halfway, a little over halfway. All right, so let's go and build something in the capital. This will be the first time we constructed anything in this series. I've been focusing so much on building up our troop numbers. Uh, so we have a lot of options here. Uh, these are the ones that we currently have. We have the mansions, which are going to increase our, our holdings. And if we see what that gets us a maximum, that's quite a bit. Yeah, that's nice. These manor houses get quite a bit of money. Uh, increasing the supply limit as well as the levy size. And uh, a few other things as well. And then we have the uh, regimental clearing, which increases the overall levies and their reinforcement rate. All right, so let's go and get... Uh, the, okay, so this is the duchy building, and this is the special building. It's a thousand, thousand gold uh, in order to get the Tower of London. Uh, it's a special building just for London. Of course, we have the duchy buildings. They're a bit more expensive as well, but they're pretty powerful. So that'd be one option. Or we can just go and get a cheap building. Uh, maybe something to earn ourselves a little bit more money. You know, actually, before we, we build anything else, we should probably get the walls and towers... A level 2 fort is just not very high. They could siege that down very quickly. And so I think that this is probably for the best to get that. And then after that, we'll get something that's more economic. Uh, scheme discovery. The existence of my plot to murder the boy here has been discovered. While my involvement is not yet known, this will make it a lot more difficult to bring my plans to fruition. All right, so that's unfortunate. This makes it very, very difficult to succeed. So we might just have to give up on it. Yeah, I think we'll probably have to give up on it. Uh, again, we could try and do it. it it's very difficult to do, though. Uh, once you uh, once you get that... Once that plot is exposed. So we could cancel it. Or we could keep it going and then attempt to bribe some people. If we attempted to do that, you know, we'd have to spend a ton of money. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of options for it any darn way. All right, so yeah, I think we'll probably, we'll keep it going for now until we have, unless we have like another plot we want to do. More than likely, we won't be completing that though. Uh, ooh, the King of Brittany has been taken prisoner. All right, interesting. Who uh, took him prisoner? Uh, a French vassal, okay. Uh, spouse, a helping hand. Your vassal, Earl Henry, is our vassal and knight. Recently found himself in a bit of trouble. Queen Matilda uh, smiles fervently as she continues. I made sure the situation resolved itself and I mentioned you as a benefactor. All right, so if we say excellent work, we'll get a hook on him. Or you say a good deed need no, needs no payment and we'll gain some piety. I don't see us seeing that though. All right, so let's go ahead and say excellent. And then I think we'll likely go ahead and modify. Yeah, I don't really see any reason to keep this hook on him. So let's go ahead and, and modify the, his, uh, probably not feudal taxes. Yeah, we won't even get any more money. Uh, the feudal levies, it's not going to get a lot, of, a lot of extra money, but it'll help. Or a lot of extra levies, I mean. All right. Oh, shit. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't use the hook. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So we did get tyranny from that. So yeah, very unfortunate. We got that, that tyranny that we didn't need to get. Yeah, that's a real shame. Uh, just because I didn't check that. You got to make sure you check that. You're doing things quick and not paying attention, and then you make... Little mistakes like that. Uh, let's go and go up to speed four. Uh, we're going to, again, build up our army for a while and make some progress, too. Uh, we've been going kind of slow because we've been doing all these marriages and, and plotting and and wars. Uh, so we have the, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, the Doni Poliest Refor Reformation. And so this is interesting. Did he reform his religion? Discuss their beliefs uh, and this official doctrine for the pagan faith. Encouraging cooperation and tolerance even towards non-believers and have requested the aid of the spirits to help guide the faithful through these turbulent times uh, So they decided to, insta to not ins instate a religious head preferring instead to let each abu determine what teachings are appropriate for their own uh, gain Gaging I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce that a crusader too will put these people in their place All right, interesting Way over here it's just kind of strange to have a, you know, event like that for so far away. It doesn't seem like something that, that a king of England would care much about. Oh, okay, so Duke William here has converted to Cornish. Uh, a lot of times your your characters will convert to the, whatever the uh, culture is in, in the realm that they 
they govern at times. It does happen. So we're still trying to increase the development here before we turn this into English. Or attempt to turn it into English. We're about 30 points away before we're able to do that. Uh, we were able to uh, sway Earl Edric, and still has pretty low opinion though. I, I imagine that our opinion is much lower with just about everybody because we did get yeah, we did get that penalty there with the tyranny. Uh, Spymaster was able to uncover a secret here. Excellent. Uh, so that's what I was saying. Sometimes you just gotta try it again, guys. Uh, there's secrets to be had. You just need to find them. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at that and see if we can't force her into this. Uh, blackmail her first. And this is a strong hook secret as well. She's a cannibal. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Yeah, she's a cannibal. Wow. All right, so she likes to eat people. Let's go ahead and, oh, well, we're flying up there. Uh, let's go ahead and blackmail her. We'll have this strong hook against her. Uh, and also our last daughter has come of age. We've already arranged marriage for her, uh, but we've got to wait for the prince to come of age. He's nine years old. And this is, of course, the one that we're hoping will get us our, our dynasty onto, mm, wait a minute. No, this is just the alliance for the Holy Roman Empire. Never mind. Uh, so we won't get our dynasty in there, uh, but it was a, a good alliance. Uh, so what did she get for her education? Fortune builder. So did pretty decent. Excellent. So let's go ahead and take a look. Did we do this already? We did. I don't know if uh, she accepted it yet. I don't know if it popped up. We just had a bunch of things happen. We'll give it a couple days. And... What we might want to do is see if we can then utilize that there. Again, this is probably fairly unlikely to succeed. Yeah, she's right here. So we could force her uh, to join. And there's no real, real reason not to, even if we don't plan on going through this. Because there's nothing else to use that hook for. Uh, so we'll see how much that, that increases it by. But again, it's not going to be enough. Even if we spent like a ton of money on this, I don't think it'd be enough. Yeah, we're still at 5 or 20% because it's, it's negative 75%, guys. You'd have to get like a lot from your agents. It is only going to be 20 months now uh, because of her being a part of that. We can see if we can't get these people in here. We'd have to spend so much money though, man. Can we get anything from our, uh, from the, the Pope? No, it hasn't been enough time. Okay. Uh, we can negotiate an alliance with Prince Richard. Let's go ahead and do that. See if there's anything else that we want to do here. No, we're good to go. A neighboring ruler, one is war. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can get anybody cheap here. We can get her, but she probably wouldn't assist much. Yeah, not for what the, the price that we're gonna pay, but we'd have to probably bribe like everybody to get this to succeed, I'd bet. Yeah, see this guy here, if he's cheaper, let's see, we got 170 here. And 150. Actually, he's cheaper. Okay, and he's he's better overall. What about this guy? How much he costs? 110. And he uh, does bring it up by quite a bit. But what we really need is a success chance. Uh, again, we're, there's no way we're going to get this high enough, guys. I really feel like throwing money at this problem isn't going to work. He is only six years old. I, I suppose we can always try again in the future. Yeah. I, just, I don't think we're going to be able to do it, guys. I mean, because, you know, when it gets exposed, it's it's incredibly difficult to do this. And we get, again, we could throw a ton of money at it, but even then, I think we wouldn't be increasing the success chance by much. It wouldn't be much, guys. Yeah. Uh, so I think we should probably just give up on this. Yeah, we'll just give up on it. You know, it was revealed. So there's really no reason to continue it, especially when it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be done so soon, less than two years. Uh, so he agreed to the alliance, of course he did. He's a good boy. And we're still set up here where, uh, he did marry though, All right, excellent. Uh, so she just needs to get pregnant. She does have the lover's pox though. Uh, so yeah, if she can get pregnant here, uh, she's 35, she's getting up there in age. He, he decided to marry our niece. Okay, I just realized that that was our niece. So if they're able to have a child, which I don't know, man, they might not be able to. Uh, then we're going to lose that land and we'll have to fight the Scottish fort again. Uh, we are losing those hooks, but there's really nothing to do with them, guys. So that's okay. Uh, and we did uncover another secret. Well, you know, man, maybe I shouldn't have canceled that. We got all these secrets that we're, we're finding here. All these people we can we can blackmail. Uh, I think it's in here. 
and maybe like we'd be able to do this without having to spend a bunch of money. Maybe I was a little bit too quick on on canceling that. Uh, but these are all strong hooks. So you know we'll keep them there. Uh, I don't really have anything else that he needs to do here, uh, other than the uh, no other secrets to find anyway. We could do the the passive ones, uh, the passive jobs. So we're gonna go after this one next. Enduring hardships has increased our fort level, and enemy occupations do not loyal, lower control. So that's good. Of course, nobody's been occupying our land, so it hasn't really been an issue. So are they at war with France here? Uh, our uh, count. Let's just take a look. What's going on here? So he's a okay. So this is him attacking Robert, our son. And it does look like is Robert winning? That's the way it seems. No, he's actually losing. He's losing this conflict. Okay, uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, it does look like he is actually outnumbered. He's probably going to lose this. Uh, so that would result in him having less crown authority. Doesn't really affect us at all, but it's interesting to, to watch it happen. And we do have we do have money now. All right, so we have the money, but we can't really build in here. You can only build one thing at a time, so we'd want to build another place, though. We have to make sure we're building somewhere that we will inherit. So we'll take a look and see what exactly he's set to inherit. Yeah, you can't see the two more titles, but we can see that he's going to be getting the kingdom. Uh, that, that's the Duchy of Kent. So he'll be getting all the lands here. Let's just take a look and see what he's going to inherit. Uh, so he's going to get everything in Essex, I believe. Uh, so that's where we'll build. We'll continue building in Essex, which we have a couple different places that we can build in. We'll build in this one next. Uh, we can just upgrade one of these two here, like the pastures, which are pretty dang good. Now let's go ahead and, and get the pastures. That increases the amount of money we earn per month. 0.2 doesn't seem like much, but that's around what you get for a building. Uh, you know, with each upgrade, about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is typically what you get. Our son was taken prisoner. That means he, he will be defeated. Uh, so he's going to have his crown authority reduced. Uh, and that does mean we lost our, our marshal. God, I, I, didn't, I don't think we're going to, to appoint one. Yeah, because he'll be released immediately. And you appoint one. And then you got to piss somebody off. Because you take it from him. Uh, Prince Richard is actually one of our powerful... Yeah, that's right, because we did make him a, a duke. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know why we haven't had him uh, assigned to anything. We really should have. Uh, maybe it's because he's not really all that great at anything. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Hmm. So, right now, our spy master is the one that is not a powerful vassal. And we've been using him for getting those secrets. Okay, eventually we're going to appoint Prince Richard to that position. Yeah, we'll appoint Prince Richard uh, over there. Uh, but let's wait until he finishes with the secrets, because Richard would not be as good at it. So we're going to go ahead and keep uh, Robert in the marshal position. And so we'll let him finish this, see if he gets a secret. And... Okay, that was just that that little alliance. It's not a big deal. With that Baron who I think we just arranged that marriage for his daughter who had good stats or good traits or something like that. We almost got control here. It's taken us a long time. Uh, we've been trying to get the control there built up. Uh, and we have an opportunity to sway him. Uh, so do we want to do it? Let me say I emphasize the shared interest. What are our shared interests? Doesn't say. Uh, we have 57% chance it is based on our diplomacy. And I mean we have we have the prestige to spend, I suppose. And yeah, this will increase it by 50 opinion. Uh, or we could just go for the 30. It's 57%, so let's roll the dice, man. And he's convinced. Excellent. So we gained a bit of prestige and further increased his opinion uh, to the point where he's at plus 67. I don't know if we want to change it up now. And he finished up with a control. Excellent. So let's go and start by, well, let's figure out where we need to, to gain more control. Uh, this is now at 100. Uh, I think most of our places should be at 100 by this point, if not all of them. That's the way it seems. This would be quicker to go through the realm management to, to look at control, but we've already, we've already done it. And it looks like we are good on control, which is excellent because we've been working on that for a long time, meaning that we haven't been able to do any of these, you know, the organization of levies or the training of the commanders. Let's do, 
let's do the, the organization of the levies. That'll allow us to get these numbers up higher uh, and get them up faster, most importantly, so that we can declare war on Wells while we still live. We are 53 years old. Our health is fine. Uh, so we'll just have to see if we can, uh, how much we can get conquered while we're alive. Because uh, Prince Richard might have different ambitions. He's not exactly a, a military man. He's not exactly ambitious. That doesn't necessarily mean they won't do any war, of course. Uh, we don't know exactly what he's going to want to do. And we, we don't even know if he'll be the, the heir yet. I am leaning towards it. Yeah, I'll probably keep him. He has a daughter. No son yet. Uh, but she did gain the trait that we wanted to. She got quick from her mother. Excellent. Oh, but she's not doing well. She is gout ridden. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we should have a daughter. No son yet. So we don't have, uh, you know, we don't have an, a male heir. Let's go ahead and move this rally point again because I'm going to forget. I don't know who we're going to war with next, but we'll put it back down to our capital there. So as far as swaying, let's see what we want to do here. Uh, see if there's anybody here we want to sway. Maybe Prince Robert? Yeah, I think we might work on, on Prince Robert. You know, he's not too happy about us disinheriting him. You know what? Actually, we don't like Prince Robert. We ain't, we ain't swaying him. He can dislike us all he wants. Instead, maybe we'll look at swaying one of our other sons. Uh, it doesn't really look like we need to. All right, well, you always want to keep uh, keep that going. Uh, so we'll just look at all of our... Uh, we want to go into F2 here. Look at all of our vassals and see one that might be a little bit lower. And then we'll sway them. And that's going to be the last thing we do this episode. Earl Robert. Yes, that's right. He doesn't like us because he used to be on our uh, uh, on our, our council. And we fired him. So let's sway him. Yeah, sorry, man. You just weren't good enough, and you weren't you weren't a powerful vassal. Had other people had to appease. So that is in fact going to be the last thing we do in this episode. Uh, there are a couple different things uh, we could do here next episode. We could call a hunt, get our prestige down, and uh, you know he's a diligent man, but I'm sure he likes to hunt as well. And after all these wars, maybe that's what he wants is a little bit of a little bit of break and and, and go out and do something uh, do something that he enjoys doing. I think he would like hunting. Uh, I know. Well, I know King William liked hunting, uh, as did many of his sons. Uh, so, I mean, that was most most monarchs, most nobles at the time liked to hunt. Not all, but m most of them. So, yeah, I think we might go for a hunt next episode, and then maybe we'll declare war on Wells here, which we might not have anything to do there. She has so many claims. So we're gonna increase her land there. No, uh, -uh. no, we're not gonna increase her land any further, guys. Uh, what we'd need to do is get our, a claim. Yeah, we'd have to get a claim here if we want to declare war. It's so the only way around it is fabricate a claim, and he's not doing anything anyway. Now, this is going to take him a very long time to do because he's so cruddy. Let's make sure we're, we're doing an after a province that's worth it. Maybe one with the highest development. Maybe go after this one first yeah, so that we connect our borders here. Yeah, so could go after that one. I'm just looking for other options here. Uh, this one would, would be a good one. Yeah, because that's the the duchy, the duchy one. So that'd be an option. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this and see like who you know has the larger armies, who has the allies. It doesn't really matter because we could defeat anybody there. Yeah, we'll determine who we want to, to get the claim on uh, next episode. Unfortunately, this episode is over. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode. And thanks for watching.